So you've probably tried a couple of custom GPTs by now, but maybe you think they're nothing special or just underwhelming. Well, it's actually the same with me. There's many that I don't use, but there are five where the old way to do the task versus the new way to do the task is just 10 times better and more easy. So I found them and I just really want to share them with you. So hopefully you can do some work faster and I'm going to share my favorite for last. So the first one I want to show you is called Scraper by Magical. Now this one is for you if you want to make content or if you have some sort of e-commerce store or any data you want to scrape. For example, I can use this on YouTube and search for a keyword, let's say ChatGPT tutorial, and now you can see what is required for me to rank on this search term. So what I'm gonna do is copy this link, paste it in here. Say I want to try to rank for the search term ChatGPT tutorial that has around 77,000 searches per month. I'll search it into YouTube and now you can see I get all of these videos that pop up on rank number one. So I'm just gonna copy the link of these ones. Look, this one has 2.6 million views. I'll go back to the scraper and use this prompt. Scrape these YouTube videos into a table. I'll just cop, I'll paste all the links. I'll just keep pasting these links. And when I run it, you can see that it gives us the account name, upload date, title, number of subscribers, number of views, and the duration of the video, which helps us know what to look for if we were to try to rank for this and get spot number one, right? So this can help you a lot in your research if you're trying to do YouTube SEO. The second use case for this could be Amazon where you can scrape your competitors' prices if you just have their link. So you can easily see if somebody's having a deal so you can make your e-com store even better. The third example I think is great for a scraper is for example, Airbnb listings or even Redfin or say Zillow can help real estate owners get good data. For example, for example, which of these Airbnb listings has the best price to value? And there's a couple of links to Airbnb rooms here. Just like that, it's doing a comparison for you. Good data leads to better decisions, which leads to better results. So highly recommend the scraper by Magical. The second GBT that kind of blew me away was this meta ad strategist by Disruptives IT. So you obviously know how important advertising is. And you might also know that Meta is the most paid advertising platform. So this helps you with Facebook and Instagram campaigns. Then optimizing your catalogs and pixels, configuring API conversions, best practices about conversion lift, brand lift, and A-B testing and more. I think you understand why AI and ads is basically going to be the same thing after a bit. And this is one of the best ones I've seen so far. So say for example, you go to the ad library where you can find a lot of meta ads. You search for United States, ad category, all ads, and then by keyword, let's do chat GPT to see if there's any ads around this. And here you get 30,000 ads around chat GPT. And what you're looking for here is ads that are working that we can take inspiration for and use ourselves, right? So I was scrolling a bit down. You can see we have this Skills Booster Digital Academy. We can click to see this ad detail. And here you can see exactly his ad, his image and what he's doing. As you can see, a couple of bullet points and a nice picture. Now, the best way I've found to write ads is essentially have 10 different hooks and then the content can kind of be the same. And the biggest problem with advertising from my experience doing it is you need to make 12 different ads and you change basically just the hook, especially for one ad set. So all of this would be the same. You would just change the hook. You'd run all the 10 ads and then you get the stats of which two are the best that you then continue split testing. So say we were running this ad, we're just copy this ad. I'm going to prompt it. Can you write 10 hooks for this ad? It already includes one hook as an example. Keep the bullets the same. I'm going to send this message. As you can see, it wrote 10 
pretty great hooks for us. But the thing is, we don't know until we run the ad. So which one of them do you think is gonna win? Well, let's say it's this one. Number six, 10X your marketing impact. So let's say that this one won the 10X your marketing impact, learn cutting edge AI techniques with ChatGPT and Midjourney from industry experts. Well, the next step you would do if this one won is you would make five different creatives, right? The picture that they see when they open the ad. You know, <laughs> this guy looks sexy, but you know, maybe we can do something better. So let's go to the Meta GPT. Can you give us five creative images? We could split test. Oops, it's actually creating the image. We don't want that. We want descriptions of creative images. Oh, well, it's actually doing it. Five creative ads right after each other. Here's the second example. Ooh, this is the third one that I really like. Looks like everybody has like some sort of VR glasses on. And the last one, there you go. The idea of AI ads is just so cool, right? And if you're not using it in 2024, what are you doing? There's so much more you can do, but check out your meta ad strategist. Link is in the description along with all the other ones. The third one that I wanna show you is called InVideo AI. Now, I know that you've probably heard about InVideo AI before, but the reason I want to talk to you about it is I created a YouTube channel from scratch without showing my face using a tool very similar to NVIDIA AI before. I posted for six months and the YouTube channel took off. I was making around 500 to a thousand dollars creating faceless content and just stock footage. So I can tell you with confidence that yes, it works. It just takes learning the YouTube game. And as you might expect, that's why people are raving about NVIDIA AI as well. Now, I'm not gonna talk about how to be successful on YouTube in this video, but to show you an example you could prompt it like make a three minute video about traveling to Malaga Spain with the best things to do and restaurants to eat post and now it's gonna say it's ready you can watch the video here I'm just gonna sign into my account so as you can see we're now ideating and creating the video that's hella nice so here is the video straight off the bat so here is the video straight off the bat Welcome to the sun-drenched city of Malaga where golden beaches meet vibrant culture and tantalizing cuisine beckons from every corner. Nestled in the heart of Spain's Costa del Sol, this enchanting city- As you can see, it just literally did a lot of work for us. Finding these drone shots of this building here in Malaga, I know this building, is just pretty tedious work. You know, you don't really want to do that by yourself. And just like that, InVideo did the work for you. Just listen here. From the high-end dining experience at Jose Carlos Garcia restaurant, where every dish is a work of art, to the bustling street food stalls serving up mouth-watering. It's literally matching, but you can actually edit with AI as well. So for example, you just say, can you make the voiceover British generate? And it's now gonna put a British voiceover on there. And now it sounds like this. Welcome to the sun-drenched city of Malaga, where golden beaches meet vibrant culture and tan. But what if you want subtitles on there, right? Well, you can just write, can you put subtitles where each word that is spoken is highlighted yellow? I'm gonna click on generate and now it looks like this. Welcome to the sun-drenched city of Malaga, where golden beaches meet vibrant culture. And there is so much more you can do with this. Even edit every single scene and footage inside this editor. So you have full control over the video. So this is my third favorite here, Video Maker by NVIDIA AI. Check it out below. The fourth GPT that we're gonna check out, I actually found by watching a bunch of YouTubers. This one you can find under programming called Crew AI Assistant by this name that I don't want to try to pronounce. They have an amazing community. Now, if you're wondering what Crew AI actually is, it's an autonomous AI agent. With now, if you don't know what Crew AI is, it's essentially an auto GPT or autonomous AI agent. That if I click here, this one has 6.7 thousand stars on GitHub. Now, the real reason why you would want to use this instead of just a normal GPT is because of this. Instead of having one agent, you have multiple agents that work together. 
So for example, you have this crew and then you could have multiple other agents to, for example, say you have a publisher job. I believe this to be the future of AI as we already get better responses when we give individual roles to different AIs. But what might you use this for? If I ask it that question, it's saying senior software engineer agent. The second is a software quality control engineer agent. The third one, a chief software control engineer agent to illustrate how crew AI can be employed in game development scenario. So I actually want to try to make a pong game that has scores and paddles I can play. So let's prompt it. Here is the prompt and I'm actually gonna test this prompt later with one of my other favorite custom GPTs. It's starting off by giving me a crew composition of these three agents. It's then asking, it's then adding task assignments like game design, quality assurance, browser compatibility. Then it asks, would you like to proceed with this plan? Is there anything you wanna change or add? Let's say start. We're off to the races and it gave me a more detailed step-by-step -step until it get an error. It wrote some Python code. I have a new machine, so I don't actually have Python installed. It gave us all this code. So I'm just gonna copy this code, pop it into VS Code, run the crew AI. It's telling us to find the open API key. You can now see that it's starting the tasks and that is to develop the core gameplay mechanics and user interface for the Pong game in JavaScript. Here you can see the answer that I got. Here are some steps I would follow to develop. So step one, two, create the ball and paddles. Three, render the ball and paddles. Four, move the ball and the paddles, write the function to update the position of the ball. Five, handle collision. Six, scoring system. Seven, eight, nine. Then he handed it over to the senior software engineer. And as you can see, it's just continuing down for more steps. And he actually had the thought, the provided code snippets are incomplete and lack proper implementation, especially the collision detection and scoring system. I need to ask my coworker, the senior software engineer. <laughs> it's pretty crazy that they're actually answering like this. Feels a lot like a video game. And here you go. This Includes you can control the paddle with the WS keys and the right paddle with up and down arrows. So you basically got a two player game here. Look at all this that it actually did and only from one prompt. Just like that, finished chain number three. Here we go to the software quality control engineer. With this code, we now have a scoring system in our Pong game. We even have the action test the game, the action input running the game and testing the scoring system by letting the ball hit the left and right edges of the canvas. It gets this annoying, I'm sorry, but as a text-based AI model, and then it just goes like, hmm, let me give it to another agent to take care of that. Okay, the Pong game has been optimized for the Chrome browser. It didn't actually write me the file, so I just had to give this to ChatGPT so then it can actually give me the exact HTML code that I should copy and paste. So let's copy it, let's paste it, and now let's run it. And I'm gonna compare it against the other one that I'll do later to see, does it have more bugs? Let's check Pong HTML, boom, just like that. Oh, I can actually move both paddles. They are really slow though. So that is an issue that I'm having, but as you can see, it is actually playable two player game. And I'm just gonna see if the collision is on, if I actually don't hit the paddle, it then starts over. And there's also a scoring system. It seems like that player two now has two points, player two now has three points, etc. So completely playable. The only thing is the paddles should go up and down a little bit faster. But hey, it's working. Normal ChatGPT would not be able to do this in a single prompt. The fifth and the final GPT is actually the most visited, the most popular custom GPT by far. And if you haven't heard of it before, it's called Grimoire. And why this is so special and why people are using it so much is it just makes everything a lot faster. That's because it has 20 plus hotkeys for coding flows and you get the prompt first code plus art with 75 starter projects. 
So that means if you have a project that you need to work on, you can probably already start with one of these. Let me just show you how crazy it is. Start by typing R for the readme. It's pretty in-depth stuff. Now you can see the hotkeys just like this is a video game. As you can see, the quick actions is literally WASD, which if you're a gamer, it's like moving forward, backwards, left, right. And that's actually what it means as well. So basically W is move forward, S, is more for asking for explanations or hmm, I'm not even sure about what to do. You can use SOS to automatically write searches for you if you don't know what to search for. Now the question is really, if this is so good at programming, can it make a better Pong game? Let's write the exact same prompt and see if it's better. Can you make a crew that can make a Pong game for me to run in Chrome browser? Let's write the exact same prompt, just not the crew part, even shorter. Send message, greetings traveler, grim interface v204 loaded step one html structure step two css styling and then it just gets on with writing the html writing the css writing the javascript and you can actually see how detailed the java code is it ends with possible next step w yes continue to proceed with this plan and and w yes continue d iterate improve or evolve E, expand, S, explain. I think we're just gonna go forward here, so I'm just gonna write W. What would be best is if I got a downloadable file. So yep, yeah, that's what it's gonna do, create three files. It's also, it's also talking about testing the game and debugging and improving. Again, it gives me these hotkeys. I'm gonna write Z that writes finish code to files and provide a download link. There we have it, download Pong game. It's in a zip file of 3.9 kilobytes. It includes three items. Let's just run the index HTML. So here is the downloaded Pong game. Let's click on this index HTML and see what's up. Okay, here we go. Oh, if I'm going WASD on the left side and the up and down arrows on the right side, this is actually a lot nicer, huh? The borders are in the middle of the game. The paddles are actually moving a lot faster, a lot easier to control. And does the scoring system work? It absolutely does. So that's really good. One prompt, no Python code, literally writing a little W and a Z. If I compare this to regular GPT, with this exact prompt. Let's quickly see what happens. <laughs> it's literally getting three errors while I'm, um, are you kidding me? There's literally more errors than, okay, come on GPT, you can do this. Uh, <laughs> even more errors. This is literally not even prompted. I asked it the same question and it got five errors in a row. What's gonna happen with the last one? Okay, it actually gave me a downloadable file. Uh, let's click it and let's try to run it. And here we actually go. So I only have one player on the left side. I can't actually control the other one. And then let's see if the scoring system works. Well, it actually stops the game. There is no scoring. There is no two player controls. So as you can see in one prompt, ChatGPT is not as good as these custom GPTs. So use Magical to scrape the web, use NVIDIA to make a full faceless video, use Disruptive's meta ads for better ads, Crew AI to make a crew for you, and Grimoire for coding. If you're wondering where I am right now, check my Instagram, andy.hafel. Follow me on Twitter to get AI updates faster. But more importantly, use one of these GPTs, you can get work done faster. So click link in the description to test one of them out and I'll see you in the next one.